Yes. those chords a bit more intense because this harmony is so special and they are a bit too soft for me. Maybe we have one version where they yes. sound a bit more painful. We have 11. Of the I last one. I was paying attention to something else, sorry. From your... No, maybe not. No, no. not. For a take there, which is a bit more pianistic mo in mood mainly, and yes. maybe it's just volume, yeah. But yeah. if this could be even more spooky mm, and it's yeah. mainly related yeah, let's to. Let's look at take um, 11. Mm -hmm. We listen to it. Doesn't yeah. like, you know, and 12 is in, so. Mm. Oh, well, it makes such a difference listening to this in surround sound after I've been listening for the last couple of days mm. in stereo or even in my car. It's really impressive. I think this, this thing that the concert hall experience is so different from CDs loses a lot mm -hmm. of its weight now. Mm. It's amazing. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Hey Martin, um, do you remember when you discovered the piano? Can you tell what happened and how you arrived at the decision to want to become a professional pianist? It all started in, in the very classical, almost boring way, I would say, that my parents, who were not professional musicians, just thought for my sister and me it would be good to learn an instrument just to do something of worth with your time um, without any ambitions to make us professional musicians or anything like that. And it was just after maybe a couple of days or a couple of weeks that I discovered how how much joy it means, more than fun it was already. But it was your age. parents who, uh, who proposed the piano? Yeah. Yeah, um, I started when I was um, five with the, with the recorder and that was not um, that much fun, not because of the instrument, but because of the teacher. And, and then we kind of, maybe it was not their decision um, that they put me and <laughs> put me on the piano, um, but we kind of together we thought piano would be maybe the most interesting thing. My sister started with the violin. Um, I don't remember myself saying I want to play the piano and nothing else. Um, but finally, yeah, I ended up at the piano and that was the moment when I had my first piano lessons where I really thought, oh, I've never done anything as enjoyable as this in my life before. Um, yeah, and then it, it went quite quickly that I played in little youth competitions, children's competitions, 
and also discovered that I have fun playing for an audience, playing on stage. I was not too nervous at this time. Now I'm actually much much more nervous when I play concerts than I was at, at a time as a child. Um, and then I've had those really impressive experiences hearing mainly piano music, which brought me to the decision, this is what definitely what I want to do. I kind of knew before, but then um, it was specific pieces. I remember like the Campanella Etude by Liszt, which I heard in one of those youth competitions played by somebody who was a couple of years older and played very well. Or the A-flat major Impromptu by Schubert from the first book of the Impromptus, which actually a girl in my group, just same age, eight years or so played, but I thought it was so beautiful. Um, those experiences all contributed to the, to, the wish, to the wish I want to be a professional pianist and nothing else. Also Yevgeny Kissin playing the third Rachmaninoff piano concerto, which I heard in the Philharmonie in Berlin, was really something I, I remember where this was confirmed, this is what I want to do. And never ever uh, hesitated about the choice of the instrument? No, also not. Maybe, I don't know, people are born for specific instruments. It might be the case with me. So it was a just few. a lucky choice yeah. or it, yeah. when you out, your parents proposed it and yeah. it worked out yeah. wonderfully. Also the, the joy of practicing that you can work with a complete piece, not like when you play a melody instrument, which I believe must be much more difficult to work, um, that you can never enjoy or very seldom enjoy the complete composition and practicing. That was something I always enjoyed tremendously and, and which um, made me never suffer of practicing. Tell us please about your study, with whom you've studied and who did really influence you, uh, your musical uh, taste, your, mm. um, and, and also pianistically. Mm. The most influential teacher pianistically was definitely the third teacher which I had, Galina Ivanzova, at the Hans Eisler School of Music in Berlin. Um, I joined her class when I was 11 and left at 19 only, so it was eight years of intense studies and that was definitely the time um, when I learned the, the fundamental things pianistically which will definitely be the basic for what I do for all my life. And, and musically I would say it was uh, the chamber music, which I've always done a lot, um, which gave me the major, major inputs and um, widened my musical understanding and my horizon even more maybe than the piano lessons I've had. And in the field of chamber music it was um, mainly Boris Pagamenshikov, the late cellist, um, who, who was from, I think, for me from 16, 17 on my main musical mentor and also chamber music partner then very soon. Um, and I played with, with all his students. so. Um, I happen to be just in, in many of his, his lessons and to hear a lot about music making in general, about career, uh, also about things which are not directly related to music. He was, he was one of the, the most important figures in my life. And at the moment I'm still um, in Hannover with Ari Vardi um, and he is at the moment such an important, um, still such an important teacher to me that I still feel like a student and don't feel like I sometimes go to see him to get an input here or a little, um, little challenge there. But I, I still learn so much, although I'm studying now with him for six years already, that after each lesson there's something new to, to think about and to develop. And yeah, I'm looking for, forward to more years of learning and studying. Have you developed a certain preference now that you're also playing a lot with, uh, with orchestras uh, for the concerti, uh, concerto repertoire or do you prefer the chamber music uh, or is it everything for you? Hmm. That's one of the things um, I enjoy so much about being a pianist that we have the, the wide range of the complete history of music in front of us and in, in each epoch there have been 
composers who have mainly written for the piano, written very specifically for keyboard instruments. Um, so we we are really so free to 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 look everywhere, to try everything, um, to play different styles. And also in terms of, of chamber music, we have, a, a, of course, unlimited solo repertoire already. And then we are involved in many chamber groups and we have the, the rich orchestra repertoire. So um, I've not found yet a corner of music where I say this is where I feel, feel the best and where I think I play the best. Maybe the focus is a lot on the, on the Viennese classics and also Bach, I, I love to play very much. Uh, Messiaen has become a, a major composer for me. Um, I'm in the studying process for the Vin Regard sur l'Enfant Jésus, for this enormous piano cycle. Um, but I'm still trying to enjoy the, the diversity as much as I can and, and playing also the Russians um, a lot and, and the virtuose repertoire. But since the Klaraske competition, I would say it is, the focus is on, on Mozart, Beethoven, Schubert. <laughs> Talking about the Clara Haskell competition, that was, I think, really a sort of breakthrough for you and, and accelerated your career, is that correct? It definitely contributed a lot to um, building contacts, getting to know people. But I wouldn't say that it was a kind of overnight event which which um, gave the fundament. But I think it was the first competition that you won yeah. and, and quite a few followed really after that. You were um, getting this fellowship from the um, Barletti Buitoni Trust mm. and then you mm. became uh, one of the BBC's um, uh, young artists that mm. um, are part of that scheme that they have and you had the um, um, Credit Suisse Young Generation Award. So all mm. these awards yeah, in a row in, in the last five years or yeah. so must have opened doors and, and uh, brought new opportunities for you. Yeah, that, that was um, exactly um, how you said now that um, it was always one thing after the other um, which, which opened new perspectives gave me new contacts, introduced me to new interesting people. It was a thing that I'm, I'm very grateful for. It was never one thing which opened up all the doors. It was first the Clara Haskell competition and, and then I had the first contact to a management in Switzerland. And then I found my management in Germany, um, the Konzertdirektion Schmidt, with, with whom I work really in, in a very, very also um, human, Humanly, mentally, what is that? <laughs> yeah, I think it. they they have a, um, a reputation for helping careers, yeah. and they yeah. are uh, very nice people. Yeah. They understand the business. Yeah. Uh, Cornelia Schmidt is around for yeah. so many years and yeah. knows everybody. Yeah. It's just a very, um, very enjoyable and trustful way of, of working together. That was um, a very important event, at least as important as the Klaraske competition, I would say. And then the things in Britain. Um, the award from the Boletti Buitoni Trust, which is really a, a unique concept because it offers so much um, counseling and so much advice together with a sum of money. Um, and then of course the Credit Suisse Award. So it was always um, one thing which, which followed the, the, the thing before. Um, and I always had space to deal with the new situation. It was never that I was overwhelmed at a certain point with 100 concerts a year, like it happens to, to some people. Um, so it was growing gradually and I still found time to learn, to practice, to, yeah, to get comfortable with the new situation. And it also brought you in contact with other artists, uh, conductors. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think you were invited to play with the Wiener Philharmoniker mm -hmm. and uh, Valery Gergiev. Yeah, this is of course the, the spectacular thing connected with the Credit Suisse Young Artist Award, which is uh, a phenomenal opportunity which no young artist would um, would have just like that to play with the Vienna Philharmonic in the Luzern Festival with Valery Gergiev. This was of course the, the, the greatest concert experience of my life I had so far <clears throat> and I think it will stay the main thing for many years, which was in summer. Um, what did you play? 
I played the Schumann Concerto, which was always a special challenge, which I love very much, but always scares me still, although I played it now many times with the orchestra. So for very important events, um, it was always a kind of strange situation that I wanted to play the Schumann so much, but I never felt 100% comfortable with it and maybe wanted to challenge myself. So also after Lu the Luzern concert... <laughs> was it the uh, orchestra or uh, Mr. Gerkiev proposing or were you... Um, was it up to you to decide what you wanted to play with them? Yeah, actually I wanted to play the um, concerto number no. 4 by Beethoven, um, which is also one of my favorite pieces to play. But um, then they said, yeah, maybe you can give us another proposal because it, it was recently played at the festival. So we decided for Schumann and I was very happy with it. So now it's your first recording on the Pentatone label and you have decided to play Mozart. Whose idea was it to play these two Mozart concertos? In the beginning, I thought that for the debut recording, um, Maybe I have to look for something very special, for something which, which would surprise people that it is recorded. And I was very, very happy and very grateful to Jörg Maser when he said, um, why not record two Mozart concertos? Because this is, um, as I said before, a field I feel a lot at home in the moment. I've played a lot of Mozart um, orchestra and solo repertoire and chamber music. Mm, so. When I heard that it is possible to actually record Mozart concertos for your debut recording and not having the pressure of looking for something very rare or halfway undiscovered maybe, um, I, I immediately said, okay, I'm more than happy with that. It's the, the thing which makes me feel the best for my first recording. And then we, we chose those two concertos because I have strong connections to each of them. The C major concerto was actually the first piece I played with an orchestra as a child at the age of 11 or 12, I don't quite remember. So, of course, there is a connection with the pieces you played for the first time, which, which will stay all your life and which is different from other pieces you learned later on. And the C minor concerto um, was maybe one of those musical experiences I mentioned before. Um, which contributed to the wish to be really to be a professional musician when I heard the piece on, a, on an old recording with Clara Haskell on a CD um, that I listened to the, to the recording for a week or two non-stop um, and it was also the first of the great later Mozart concertos which I've studied intensely so um, it was quite clear that I wanted to record those two. And, um how did you like the, the experience of recording? Uh, because that's also relatively new for you. It is your second mm. uh, disc and the first mm. one uh, mm. um, with an mm. orchestra. And you're sitting there mm. in an empty hall with mm. a lot of microphones. And yeah. uh, that's so different from the concert experience. Mm. How mm. did you prepare for that? How did you like that experience? Yeah, here I'm very happy to have had this, um, those two years with the BBC. On the, on the New Generation Artists Scheme, uh, which is, of course, a unique opportunity to, to gain a lot of experience in a very short time, because they offer you to actually record as much as you can. If you have enough repertoire, you can record every month new things, both in, in solo and in chamber music, also with all the orchestras. Um, this helped me a lot during the last two years to um, to be ready for it for you. To be ready, yeah, to know the, the difficulties in the studio, to know the opportunities which you don't have on stage and to just feel comfortable in the recording situation. Was it different to record with a, with a record company compared to the situation with the, uh, the BBC radio? Of course it's very different because, um, because they offer you so many opportunities to record um, then in each session, of course, there's very little time and it's all um, quite limited um, time-wise and then you cannot interfere in the editing process. So um, sometimes it, it feels a bit like, like recorded concerts with, with more opportunities to cut. And the experience for our CD recording was entirely different because everything from the, from the very first 
email about setting and hall and everything um, until the last note it was was all so so perfectly organized and so um, enjoyable for me um, that I think it, it doesn't get any better the piano and and the the tuner was a, a really really phenomenal phenomenal guy and the hall and especially the orchestra was as good as I thought it could be and I'm, I'm very happy with the experience. Okay Martin, thank you for the interview. Thank you. Now we will now move to the music and I would like to ask you to tell what you're going to play. Yes, we'll move now to the second movement of Mozart's C minor concerto KV 491. <laughs> 